Hey everyone, welcome to another Diamond Fire tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at spawning mobs. We're going to make a simple mob arena game where an infinite amount of mobs spawn and the player has to fight them. To start, we will be using a player event. I am going to choose plot and server events, player join game event. So we're going to start this game as soon as the player joins the game. First, we want to use a player action to give them an item so that they can fight off the mobs. Uh, if they have no equipment, it would be a little bit unfair, wouldn't it? So we're gonna go to give items and we are going to give them, how about an iron sword? That seems fair. Now let's start spawning some mobs. To spawn the mobs infinitely, we're going to want to use a repeat block. The repeat block can be found here and it is used to repeat the code inside it. I'm gonna place down this repeat block in the code line and you can see that it has these sticky pistons. Any code blocks inside the sticky pistons will be repeated according to the repeat block logic. So let's look at our repeat options. We can repeat forever. We can repeat while a certain condition is true, for example, while the player is alive. We could also repeat a number of times, for example, five times or 10 times. There are many other options for repeats, but mostly we're gonna focus on these three. There are many other repeat options, but we are going to go with the first one for now. Repeat forever. Now any code that we place between these two sticky pistons will be repeated forever. One of the first things we'll want to think about with the repeat block is that we need a delay between each repetition. Otherwise, it'll try to spawn infinitely many mobs all at once. To create a delay, we are going to use the control block, which helps us control code execution. We are going to place down a control block in between these sticky pistons. You can see that by default the control block already has the wait action selected. There are some other options that are also useful, but we are going to focus on the wait action. This lets us wait a certain amount of time before executing the next piece of code. If we look inside the control block chest, we can see that there is a tag here for the time unit. We can wait a certain amount of ticks, seconds, or minutes. We're going to go ahead and choose seconds. How many seconds should we wait? To specify this, we will use a number item. We're going to first reach into our values menu here, and we are going to grab a number item. We're gonna place this in our hotbar, we're gonna hold it, and then we're going to type a number into chat. I wanna wait five seconds between mob spawns, so I am going to type the number five. When I press enter here, you can see that our number item is now set to the number five. We will put the number item in the chest. Now that our five second delay is out of the way, let's go ahead and spawn some mobs. To spawn mobs, we will use the game action code block, which can be found here. Game actions can perform actions that aren't related to specific players or entities, but affect everyone on the plot. For example, spawning new entities or changing blocks. Let's place the game action block right after the wait block, but still within the sticky pistons of the repeat block. In our game action categories, we're going to go to entity spawning, which allows us to spawn mobs. And here is the spawn mob action. Now this big chunk of text here tells us a bit about how this action works. So there are a lot of pieces of information that we can specify for spawning mobs. They include what kind of mob to spawn, where to spawn it, and a bunch of optional attributes such as how much health the mob has, a custom name, potion effects, or items. Let's go ahead and choose the spawn mob action. To start, we need to specify what sort of mob to spawn. We can choose any spawn egg. I am going to choose a zombie. Now we'll put the zombie spawn egg into the chest here. Now it's time to specify a location to spawn the mob. To do this, we're gonna go back into our values menu. We're gonna right click, and we're going to grab a location item. Now locations can be set in a couple of ways. We're gonna go into the gameplay area here. If we left click a block, you can see that it sets the location to the location of that block. If we right click, it will set the location to where we are currently standing. For spawning mobs, we'll want to go with the second option. Now we're going to put the location item into this chest. Now we will spawn a zombie at this location. Let's go ahead and test it out. You can see here that after five seconds, a zombie spawns. And after another five seconds, another zombie will spawn. Now that was a pretty solid basic game, but I don't really like that the zombies catch on fire. A way to prevent them from catching on fire is to give them helmets. If we go back to our spawn mob action, you can see that we can specify items for the mob's equipment. 
This includes what they're holding in their hands, as well as armor. There's a specific pattern for how we put the items in the chest to specify if they're holding an item or wearing it. So, to specify the helmet, that is going to be the second slot from the bottom left. So, let's go ahead and grab a helmet. I think we'll use an iron helmet here. And we're going to put the iron helmet in the second slot from the bottom left, just as I mentioned. In fact, let's go ahead and add some other armor as well. We'll give the zombies chainmail armor for the rest of their armor, and uh, maybe we'll give them leather boots, because that sounds fun. We'll line up the armor like so. And now let's give the zombies something to hold in their hand. I don't want them to deal too much damage, so let's make it a wooden shovel. Now when we play our game, we see that our zombies will spawn with the gear that we have provided in the chest. Let's explore some of the other options when it comes to spawning mobs. We see here that we can specify a number for the amount of health that the zombies have, as well as a text for a custom name and potion effects to have them spawn with speed or strength or slowness or any of the other potion effects that exist in Minecraft. Let's start by giving them custom health. We're going to grab a number item from the values menu, just as we did before. Health numbers are equal to an amount of hearts times two. So to give a zombie five hearts, we would use the number 10. Five hearts is less than the default spawning health of a zombie, so this should make our game a little bit easier. We're gonna go ahead and place this in the chest. Let's give our zombies a name. To keep things simple, I'm gonna just name them zombie, but I want zombie to be in green. To specify the color green, we are going to type and A. If you want to learn more about color codes, you can check out the reference book here and look at color codes, and you can see that there are all of these codes for all sorts of colors and effects that you can add to text. Now let's set our text to zombie, but in green. You can see now that we have our text item all set up, and we'll put it in the chest, and now this will be the name of our zombies. Finally, let's bring in some potion effects. We're going to once again go back to our values menu, and we are going to grab a potion effect item. Now to set potion effect items, we're going to hold this, we're going to right click, and we are going to choose an effect. I want our zombies to be a little bit faster than normal, so I'm going to give them speed. We can see now that we have the speed potion effect, and by default the amplifier is speed 1, and the duration is infinite. Let's make it so that the zombies have a little bit more speed, but for a little bit less time. To set the amplifier, we just type a number, same as we did with the number item. I'm going to type the number 2 to give the zombies speed 2. To set the duration, we're going to do something similar, but we're going to type a duration in digital clock format. So minutes, minutes, seconds, seconds, something like that. So we're going to type 1 minute and 30 seconds. And you can see now that our duration is 1 minute and 30 seconds on the speed to potion effect. Now let's put the potion effect into the chest. At long last, we have some cool and unique mobs in our game. Let's test it out. And here we go, we have a fast zombie, named zombie, with 10 health, and you can see that it takes, with this armor, 3 hits to kill them, that's a little bit less than normal. Thanks for watching this Diamond Fire tutorial.